Hey, this is Jeremy Blum, and this is just going to be a quick walkthrough of some of the progress I've made so far on my Jarvis Home Animation platform. So Jarvis stands for Jeremy's Astute Residential Virtual Intelligent System. Um, and basically, it's a networked home automation platform that I'm working on. It's been a side project for the last two years or so. Uh, I've kind of rebuilt it from scratch three or four times now. So right now, it's like the third or fourth iteration. And I'll uh, walk through some quick snippets of some parts of the system to give you an idea of what it's capable of. The way the system is set up right now is there's an open API that allows multiple clients to make requests into the system and tell it to do something. Currently, I have a command center that's set up to issue some of those requests, and I can also make some of those requests on my phone. I anticipate also having a more complete mobile app and, and mobile web app later that I can also use to make requests into the system. But so one of the first examples of what I can do is if I go into my room here um, and I have my phone, I can just give my phone a quick shake and it'll turn the lights on. And that's basically my phone sending a request to the system to turn on the lights. The command center is over here on my nightstand. And you can see that everything is synced up in real time. So this left dial uh, indicates the current brightness of the lights. And you can see that it's synced together. So if I turn the lights off here, the dial goes down over there as well. This is the command center, which I built from scratch and uses a combination of a Raspberry Pi, an HD display, and two custom circuit boards that I made uh, with microcontrollers to control the uh, lights and dials and buttons on this interface. It also includes a passive infrared sensor. It uses that to detect if someone's in the room or not. If someone's been out of the room for a long period of time, it'll automatically turn the screen off. Uh, to save power and reduce burn-in. It also has temperature and humidity sensing for the room, as well as a gesture sensor that can sense gross gestures for doing things like silencing the alarm clock. On the bottom, there's buttons to switch between the different screens. I haven't finished making the other screens yet, so right now you just see the home screen. The background image is one that I borrowed from uh, Google that they use in the Google Now platform when you're in San Francisco. The dials on the left and right control the lights and audio respectively. You can turn them up and down uh, to control the brightness of the lights, turn them on and off, and to pause and play and adjust the volume of music. The button in the middle is used for issuing a voice command to the, to the system. Whenever you're holding it down, it's listening to you and can understand natural language requests for doing various things like controlling the alarm clock, opening and closing the blinds, changing the lights, playing music, etc. As I mentioned, you can issue natural language requests to the system to do all kinds of things. I won't go through all of them, but I'll show a few examples. For example, let's say I want to control the blinds over here. I have a mechanism connected to my blinds. Basically, I have a servo motor with a big gear in the middle and then two linear uh, a rack and pinion set up, basically, uh, that pulls the strings up and down to open and close the blinds. Uh, this is partially using the alarm clock functionality of the system. When it wakes me up in the morning, it'll open the blinds, but I can also uh, issue a voice request to do it. Please open the blinds. blinds open. And you can see that the blinds are open. It may have been hard to hear it, but the system also spoke to me to indicate that it was opening the blinds. I also have a system connected to my Google Music account, and because it's a subscription music service, I have access to just about any song in the world that I could ever want to listen to. Because I'm using natural language processing, I can give an, arbit an arbitrary query even about an artist that's never played for me before, and it'll understand that I'm speaking about wanting to listen to music, and it'll understand if I'm asking about a particular album, artist, song, etc., and go search for and play that information for me. So let's say, for example, I want to listen to Mozart. I can issue a voice request over here, and then you'll see the uh, lights turn on over there to indicate it's connecting to the web and streaming the music. And then the lights will go on here when the system speaks to me and says that it's playing music. You might have a little bit of trouble hearing it from over here, but then I'll walk over. I'll turn the lights down so that you can see the LED effects a little bit better. Play Mozart. You can see the LEDs turn on. And it just said it was playing top tracks by Mozart. And hopefully you can hear it. So in addition to uh, making queries by voice, I can also control the music um, with the dial and buttons over here directly. So if I want to pause it, for example, I can just give this a click. 
and it'll pause the music and you might not be able to hear it from here but the music just paused and uh then i can restart it again by uh just tapping it again and it'll start playing the music another useful example of a query i can do with the system is for the weather let's say i'm planning to make a trip to new york tomorrow how's the weather in new york city tomorrow Tomorrow, the weather in New York will be partly cloudy starting in the afternoon. The temperature will range from 67 to 84 degrees Fahrenheit. There is a 0% chance of precipitation. Jarvis can also understand and answer general knowledge questions. For example, what is the Wall Street Journal newspaper? The Wall Street Journal is a New York-based English-language international daily newspaper with a special emphasis on business and economic news. It's easy to put the system into a sleep state when you're ready to go to bed as well. For example, right now I have the lights on and the blinds open, but I'm ready to go to sleep. I could also be playing the music and it would be able to turn that off too. Good night, Jarvis. The blinds close, the lights turn off, the system says goodnight, and the screen turns off so it doesn't keep me awake while I'm sleeping. Once I'm ready to get up in the morning, the screen will either turn on with the alarm clock automatically, or I can just tap the button, the screen will come back on, and the lights will come back up. So in addition to the main components that I just showed you, there's a few other key parts of the system. There's the blinds controller over there, that's basically some uh, laser cut parts connected to a servo and a uh, particle Wi-Fi connected microcontroller that talks to the rest of the system. All the lights in here are Philips Hue smart lights. The controller for those is underneath my bed. And then those then talk back to the main brain, which also handles the music, uh, controlling the speaking animations on this lamp and on the wall plaque, uh, doing all the, running the API and doing everything that allows everything to interface with the system. And that's back behind here. And this is a tiny quad core uh, Linux microcomputer. That's basically a system in the nutshell right now. There's a bunch of other functionality, but um, I think that gives a good overview of some of the key things that the system is able to do. And I'm continuing to work on it and build it out more. Thanks for watching.